Well, if you've been here for the last couple of weeks, you know we've been studying through the book of Joshua. And this week, we, as you, and you've probably watched on Facebook too, you see we've got these things posted. This is what we're going to do. And we, we, uh, we're going to study chapter 2 of Joshua. And we're going to learn about Rahab, the prostitute. And, and so uh, in preparation of that, you see we've got uh, Rahab's red rope kind of hanging right here from, from our window. And if you would come in here in the last couple of days, you'd have seen a big Rahab's red rope hanging from the screen. And we're going to jump into that and study it. And that's what we do. We study through books of the Bible. And I think that's the way we should do it. I think that God made a Bible and he made it just right. Amen. amen. Yeah. That was a good spot for an amen. <coughs> so um, that's what we do. However, remember I told you, I think it was last week, and I've told you before many, many times actually, that, that the place that I hear from God the loudest is in the shower. Anyone ever remember me saying that? Yeah. Anyone else have a spot that they just like absolutely hear from God, like their prayer closet, their spot? I don't know if it's, if it's your closet like literally, or if it's in the car, or if it's in the shower, but uh, what's that? On the lawnmower. You must hear from God a lot. <clears throat> so, so uh, I know this is weird, but I took a shower today. <laughs> took a shower today. Saturday night at the movies. What's up? <laughs> um, so anyway, I took a shower today, and so I'm not going to preach that message. So I, I, I guess God just wanted something different of me and for you, and so uh, scrap that. So no Joshua today. Got something totally different that I believe that God wants to share with you, and so here we go. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do something totally different. So that being said, the reason I'm telling you that is because you're going to go, well, what does this have to do with Joshua? Nothing. Where are the verses on the screen? None. Where are the pictures? None. There's nothing going to be on the screen to help you with your book. So you're going to have to just find it. If you want to share verses with me, you're going to have to find it because it was today that the shower came. And so there's no time to change all that. So here we are. Now, I want to start here. I want to start with this verse, and it's Hebrews 10.25. And it's, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's kind of cool because you guys have chosen to not neglect the meeting together. It was yesterday that I actually received a text. I'm not going to say who it was. I received a text from someone who comes to this church extremely regularly and texted me and asked me if we were actually having church tonight. <laughs> now, uh, it, it is sort of funny, but to me, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that God's going to share with you tonight something totally different, that destroys my heart. I, I'm just being honest with you. That wrecks me. It wrecks me that, 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 that people, Christian people, that the thought even enters your mind that we would not gather to worship the creator of life because of fireworks. Like, I, so I'm just letting you into a little bit of my darkness where I sit and it drives me insane. Um, but you chose to, to, to meet tonight. You've not neglected and so kudos to you. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Now, I think that that verse is very appropriate for us because it, it says now that the day of his return is drawing nearer. And, and I don't know when Jesus is coming. Nobody knows. But I do know this. It's closer today than it was yesterday. So it's very apropos that we get together and encourage one another. See, that's why we came here. We came here to encourage one another. I didn't come just to encourage you. I've come that you might encourage me. But I can't tell you what to do. I can only be obedient to the Lord in my own life. And I want to encourage you tonight. And I think, I, 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 this, this is what I want to do. I want to just frame it right here. I want to start um, this way. This is how I want to encourage you. And, I, and when I say I want to encourage you, I think that the Lord really wants to encourage you. We are celebrating, I don't know how much celebrating we're going to do tonight because of the weather. But we're celebrating July 4th, our independence for our country. It's a big day. I mean, 
It's a big day. It's so big, it's bleeding into other days now. I went to Mount Dora last night. Anyone go to Mount Dora last night? Right, right? It was a big to-do. Like, it's bleeding. It's like, remember, remember how Christmas was like, first it was Christmas, then it, Christmas Eve was big, and now it's like the Z starts playing music a month in advance. Like, Christmas is expanding. Before you know it, it's going to be like the car business where the 2014s come out in February of 2013. It, it's just getting crazy. But July 4th is now July 3rd. And, and at some point, it's going to be July. It's just going to be July. Happy July. And we're going to be selling. It's a big day. Well, July 4th, uh, our independence, it, it, when we think about this holiday, it conjures up a lot of visuals in our minds. I know that. I know that it, it's, very, it's a very emotional day for a lot of people. Uh, it, it brings up pictures in our mind of, of, of buildings with planes going through them. It brings up pictures in our mind of loved ones that have been lost in, in battle to protect freedom. I, I, it brings up uh, in, in our minds the visuals of our own boot camp and, and training as we went through it. Uh, it brings up memories and emotions and it stirs our American pride and it, and it makes us reflect on, on, on even like the, 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 the war where we gained our own independence way, way back when, you know, Re Paul Revere and the Redcoats are coming. There's a lot of things that, that swell up inside of us as Americans on July 4th. Are you tracking? I mean, it, there's a lot to it. And, and, and I know that in this room, there's, you know, it may be a, a fairly light crowd for us, but there's still a lot of people here and a lot of different things are going on in your mind right now as you think about July 4th. And I, I'm very much aware of that, even though I don't know exactly what's going on in your mind. I know we all have stuff going on, right? So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you first by reading. I'm going to do a lot of reading tonight, probably not a lot of talking. I want to read Psalm 74. I think it's apropos because I want to encourage you. And I'm going to read this, and you might be asking as I read this, why in the world is he reading this tonight on July 4th? And we'll get to that. So I'm going to give you a moment to get to Psalm 74. I don't know where it is in your pew Bibles there, even though we don't have pews, but please do yourself a favor and open up God's Word. Don't cheat yourself. What is it? 401 in the, in the yellow and oranges. Should be right around there, ish, right? Ish. All right, y'all there? I'm going to read almost the whole thing. I'm going to start at the beginning. Here we go. Oh God, why have you re rejected us so long? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your own pasture? Remember that we are the people you chose long ago, the tribe you redeemed as your own special possession. And remember Jerusalem, your home where, here on earth. Walk through the awful ruins of the city. See how the enemy has destroyed your sanctuary. There your enemies shouted their victorious battle cries. There they set up their battle standards. They swung their axes like woodcutters in a forest. With axes and picks, they smashed the carved paneling. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the place that bears your name. Then they thought, let's destroy everything. So they burned down all the places where God was worshipped. We no longer see your miraculous signs. All the prophets are gone, and no one can tell us when it will end. How long, O oh God, will you allow our enemies to insult you? Will you let them dishonor your name forever? Why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. Jump down to 18. See how these enemies insult you, Lord? A foolish nation has dishonored your name. Don't let these wild beasts destroy your turtle doves. Don't forget your suffering people forever. Remember your covenant promises. For the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be humiliated again. Instead, let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how these fools insult you all day long. 
Don't overlook what your enemies have said or their growing uproar. You may question why I was reading this, although many of you, I'm, I'm sure, have already picked up on it. You look at our country right now, and you can certainly identify with this Asaph fella who wrote this. We look at our country, and we wonder, why? Why won't you do something? Why is it so bad? Let me stir your memories. You, I'm, I'm 46 years old. I'm not that old, but I can remember the blue laws. Who can remember blue laws? Where things were just closed on Sunday. Not that Sunday is any more special than any other day, but it was perceived that that was like God's day. And so most of our population would just go to church that day. And you'd go to church in the morning, and then after church service was done, you'd go and you'd have dinner on the grounds, lunch on the grounds, right? You'd go out to the side between you and the graveyard. You'd eat and hopefully not end up there. You'd end up back in the church. And you'd, and you'd worship all day. That's just what you did. And stores were closed that day, not only to honor that, but people didn't work that day. You couldn't get people to work on a Sunday. Why? Because they were here. They were in church. Well, those days are, are gone. Let me jog your memory a little bit. How about anyone in this room remember when prayer was allowed in school? And I don't. I mean, I... I don't. If, if, I, if they were praying in my school, they were doing it in Hebrew. I wouldn't have known. I come from a very Jewish town. Uh, you know, and, and it's gone now. Uh, abortion is crazy in our country. I want to give you a staggering number. And it's a number as of uh, January 12, 2014, because the 15 hasn't come out yet. But I want to give you the exact number because every single baby that has been killed is worthy of being mentioned because they're a person. And the scriptures tell us that we were, we, were, we were born at the moment our mother conceived us, not when we came out, when we were conceived. And as of January 12, 2014, since 19, I'm sorry, since 1973 when Roe v. Wade was passed, when it came to January 12, 2014, there were 56 million 662,169 babies in this country that we have murdered. Obviously, I'm not the only one who's seen what's going on on the news here lately with same-sex marriage, and people are up in arms. I hope that you guys watched what I had said on Facebook. We need to, let, let's just, let, me just, let me just put it in a little capsule. I'm not asking you what your opinion is. That's between you and God. But there's one thing that we all have to do, whether you agree or not, starts with an L. Can you say it for me? Love. Love. And, 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 and shame on anyone, honestly, shame on anyone who gets on any social ma media and blasts people because of what's going on. That's, that's not how you, you don't win people <laughs> to the Lord through telling them that they suck. Okay? You tell them that they're loved. It is the love, the goodness, the sweetness of God that leads to repentance. It was just the other day that a, another story, I think it was in Oklahoma, where they're taking the Ten Commandments down out of the courthouse. You guys see that? It's not the first one. There's been many. And that just kind of makes you a little upset, doesn't it? You know, you can't, uh, you, some, in some places you can't preach uh, the full, the Bible says we should do this, the, the full counsel of God, you know, like all of it, cover to cover, where it's getting to the point where you can't really do that anymore in some places because it's considered a hate crime, some of this stuff, because we're, we're not agreeing with someone's choice, and so who are we to tell? And so we're, we're being threatened as Christians, forget, you know, just preachers and, and church buildings and all that, but us as believers, we're being threatened that we can't share the truth of God's Word because we're, we may get arrested or maybe they'll take our tax-exempt status away. Let me just comment on that off the Bible. This is just me. The Bible does tell us that we're supposed to give to Caesar what's due him. We give to God what's due him. We, we'll go pay taxes. I don't care, but we're not going to stop preaching the truth of God's Word at this church. I don't know about any others, but that's, that's just here. Let me get back over here. Um, 
Here's a big one, and I don't know if, it, if, it's, if I'm the only one who gets kind of bummed out about this, but do you know there's about 70% of us in this country that, that profess to be Christians? You understand this, that that's the common number? I, I'm not God. I don't know how many really are. I mean, it could be 75. It could be 20%. I have no clue. But 70% of us <coughs> say that we're Christians. Now, that is a massive majority. Would you not agree? That is a big-time majority, yet we are forced as a country, forced in the public schools that we pay for to teach evolution as truth. Anyone else get chapped about that? <clears throat> it kind of bugs me. There's frustration with this apparent downward spiral. Are you guys understanding now why I read Psalm 74? D does Psalm 74 speak to you right now in this country as we celebrate July 4th? So, so as we celebrate July 4th, we're thinking fireworks, we're thinking cookouts, we're thinking George Washington, we're thinking independence, we're thinking hoorah, this country's awesome. But at the same time, right, that's over here, but at the same time, don't we all feel a little bit like, man, what happened here? What is going on with our country, and why can't we fix this thing? Do you guys get both of them? You got kind of a, a, a mixed head? Like, what, what do you do? Well, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. See, we think that we need to fix this thing. We think that we need to elect the right people. We think that we need to march Washington. We think, we think, we think. But I want to encourage you. See, there was a guy who lived out all the things that America has gone through. He was, a, he was one man who tasted the incredible prosperity, all the prosperity that God could possibly give, just like we as a nation have enjoyed. Incredible resources, incredible blessing. And, and, but then at the same time, this same man has, has also had the pleasure of enjoying the suffering that goes along with it. So the, the blessing of the nation over here, he enjoyed all of it. And then over here, when we have this, this part of our mind that's going there, but, but this, this country is going to hell in a hay basket. Like, what's going on here? And this one guy experienced this too as he watched his life completely fall apart. You know what I'm talking about? His name's Job. He, he, is the, he is one person that has absolutely experienced everything that we've experienced as a nation of people. And he had questions just like Asaph had of God. Like, why is this happening and why won't you fix this? We've all had that, that same conversation with God, haven't you not? And, and, and so listen, I, I want to encourage you because what you're going to see here is is Job has asked those same questions of God. And, and God's like, you want an answer? I know things seem rough. Let me answer you right now. Let me encourage you. That's what we came here tonight to do, right? To be encouraged. So I want you walking out of here so encouraged you don't worry ever again. Listen here. God of the universe is about to lay out his job description to Job. And he's about to lay it out to you so you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. Job asks him some tough questions, and I'm going to read the entirety of Job 38. If you want to read along, you can, or just close your eyes and listen. It's fine. Chapter 38, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. He steps out, and he says, Job, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Now get ready. Get ready for the job description of God. You ready? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations, and who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb and as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness? For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, this far and no further will you come. Here your proud waves must 
stop. Has anyone ever in this room ever stood at the, at, the, at the shore of the ocean and looked out at this magnificent ocean that's so powerful and you see the waves coming in, right? And don't you feel so small? Don't you feel so wonderfully small when you stand before the ocean, anybody? And that mighty ocean that is so intimidating, God says, this far and no further will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. So you see the immensity of his power. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? As the light approaches, the earth takes shape like clay pressed beneath a seal. It is robed in brilliant colors. You see, he's taking credit for something, isn't he? The light disturbs the wicked and stops the arm that is raised in violence. He's taking credit for something. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Again, he takes credit. Have you explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realize the extent of the earth? Tell me about it if you know. Where does light come from? And where does darkness go? Can you take each to its home? Do you know how to get there? But of course you know all this. For you were born before it was all created. And you are so very experienced. See, God has the spiritual gift of sarcasm. And that's why I love him. Have you visited the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of hail? I have reserved them as weapons for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Where is the path to the source of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created a channel for the torrents of rain? In other words, who's deciding where every drop falls right now? Was it you? Who laid out the path for the lightning? See, it's... Do you ever watch lightning storm? Like, we, we can, when we see the path of the lightning, we, we think of maybe where it hits. But see, have you ever looked at the... I'm gonna be, it's going to be a little loud. <laughs> across the sky? The little nooks and crannies and... At least like, and in a flash of a second, it seems like it goes in a thousand different directions. And he says, I planned out all of that. It never goes where I don't tell it to go. I direct the lightning. I direct the raindrops. Who makes the rainfall on barren land in a desert where no one lives? Who sends rain to satisfy the parched ground and make the tender grass spring up? Does the rain have a father? He just took credit. Who gives birth to the dew? He did again. Who is the mother of the ice? Again. Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? Again. For the water turns to ice as hard as rock, and the surface of the water freezes. Again. Can you direct the movement of the stars? Again. Binding the cluster of the Pleiades or loosening the cords of Orion. Can you direct the sequence of the seasons or guide the bear with her cubs across the heavens? These are the various constellations that we admire and look up at in the sky. Do you know, and he takes credit for that. Do you know the laws of the universe? Again. Can you see that? Can you, can you use them to regulate the earth? Again. Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Again. Can you make lightning appear? Again. And cause it to strike as you direct? Again. Who gives intuition to the heart? Again, and instruct, instru instinct to the mind. Again, who is wise enough to count all the clouds? Only him. Who can tilt the water jars of heaven when the parched ground is dry and the soil has hardened into clods? Only him. Can you stalk the prey for a lioness? See, we think the lion is so strong and they're the king of the jungle, but no, he's taking credit for even that. Can you stalk the prey for a lioness and satisfy the young lion's appetites as they lie in their dens or crouch in the thicket. See, we think we got the natural world even figured out. He's like, no, you don't. I do. Who provides food for the ravens when their young cry out? When their young cry out to God and wander about in hunger. What a resume. <laughs> Can, yeah. Yeah. I 
I'll bring you back to the Psalms here real quick. Psalm 72. It, it's, it's, it's David's last prayer in the Psalms. He wants to encourage you tonight. See, he says in Psalm 72, 18 and 19, he says, praise the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. See, we look at the list of all the stuff that's going on in our country and we're like, why? We got to figure this out. We got to fix this. What is going on? Lord, why won't you fix this problem? And I'm here to tell you, he's got this. Jay, I'm picking on you, he said, uh, my back is hurting because I feel I'm, like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's not your job. It's not our job to do that. It's his job, and listen to his resume. Can you, dis can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you regulate the earth? Can you stretch out the heavens and move the stars? Can you count the clouds by name and number? Can you do that? What makes you think you can fix this country? And what makes you think that this country isn't exactly what he ordered it to be right now? Exhale. <laughs> Exhale. There's so much tension in the body of Christ. How can we save this country? The place is going to hell. Exhale. You, you, this is God's, he, this is his dirt and we're his people. You know, in Romans chapter, go here too, Romans chapter 13. See, we, 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 we worry about stuff all the time and we, we carry these loads that we don't need to carry. And he said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. This is part of it right here. Carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders is not what you're made to do. Romans 13.1. Everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Listen. Do you think, for a second, I'm going to step on toes, do you think that you elected Barack Obama? Come on now, seriously, you can joke around about your president. Do you think you actually had something to do with it? Not even a little. And it's not because, I don't like that son of a gun, I didn't vote for him, no. It's because God places in authority who he sees fit. Let me give you some more, just in case you don't understand. See, it's the arrogance of, of, of and, and I can only speak of Americans because I'm, I'm American. It, it's, is that it's the arrogance of, of not only Americans, but, but, but people all across the earth that think that their nation, that their country rises and falls because of strong leadership and, and, and greater intellect and much better economics and better education system and better health care and guns and this and that and my philosophy and, and we're a democracy or republic and you're a communist and we're better and this and that. No, you're all wrong. I'm wrong. We're, that's all wrong. Acts, don't jump, Jess, I skipped. Acts 17, 26. God created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. You didn't, and I didn't, and no leader ever did. God is in control of his heaven and his earth, and he's decided what this country should be. Stop freaking out about what's going on in your country. There is one Christian nation, and America is not it. The Christian nation is the body of believers, the holy nation of priests that live worldwide, who's ever lived loving Christ and believing in him, and whoever will. That's the only Christian nation that will last forever. Jesus was here before America. He's here after America. And the church, his people, is the only nation that's been designed to even last so we pour our resources willingly, joyfully, freely into the nation that will last. Stop trying to fix America. Go reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and build the nation of Christianity. That's our job. That's our job. <clears throat> so go back to the Psalms here for a second. 
Psalm 42.5. I think Amanda just killed some of our children. Did you hear that? <laughs> Someone just got saved some money right there. <laughs> Psalm, Psalm 42.5. Psalm 42.5, read this, this just a couple weeks ago, and it obviously was for a reason. Psalm 42.5 says this, and, and you can, I'm sure you can identify with this. Probably most of the people in this room, when you put the news on and you see all this stuff going on, you know? And, and, and this is what it says. Why am, I, why am I discouraged? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And I can, I mean, can't you identify with, like, I'm discouraged. Some, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, this whole same-sex marriage thing doesn't bother me. But let me tell you what bothers me. I'm just going to be honest with you. What bothers me is when I turn, and this is just a personal, this is, this is not Scripture. This is just me over here, okay? What bothers me is, is when you put on the TV or something and you see the White House this image of America with a rainbow across it. Like, it's okay, like if people are going to sin, people are going to sin. I, I get it. But it's almost like we were flaunting it. You know what I mean? It was like, and it was big, and it's right there in the White House. It's almost like we were going, nee, 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 nee. that bugged me. And so I can relate to this about discouraged about our country. And so this guy does too. He's just like, why? But, but he starts questioning. He's like, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And if you put your hope in the country, and if you put your hope in a political party, okay, if you do that, then you're going to be sad. You're going to be discouraged. But what, look what he says. I, I don't put my hope in, a, in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or, 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 or any one presidential candidate. I don't put my hope in Donald Trump. He's going to bring back America. What does he say? I'll put my hope in God. I'll put my hope in God. I will praise him again my Savior and my God. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I, 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 love, I love this. And, you know, we, we have arrogance in our country, and I'm sure that it's not just here in this country. I mean, wherever you live, if you're part of the powers of that country, you probably have a sense of arrogance, too, where you feel strongly about your country. There's some countries that kind of like, they feel like they can take us down when they're like that big, you know, but they're, but they're excited about their country. And, and I, I, I see here in this country, uh, you know, that it's almost like, it's almost, it does almost seem like we're losing the fight, doesn't it? No, no, no listen, listen. It almost seems like we are losing the fight, like we're they're getting rid of all of our Christian stuff, and they want to take "In God We Trust" out of the uh, off of our money, and they want to take uh, "One Nation Under God" out of the, the the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, and they're taking the Ten Commandments out, and you know, I mean, I get it. It almost seems like we're losing the fight, but I love this. It, it's like the, it, it's almost like, and and listen, we all have political ideas, all right, but it's it's it. There seems to be like this agenda to dethrone God. Do you, do you get it? Do you, do you sense that at least? Now, I don't know if that's the reality, but do you sense it? Listen, this is Psalm 2. Be encouraged, loved ones. This is, this is why you're here tonight. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to this God. I love this. But the one who rules in heaven laughs. He laughs at our little, these little efforts. Oh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take America for, for the, this agenda. We're going to take America for, for that agenda. He's, he is, he's in heaven on his recliner with his feet up. He's not freaking. We're out there going, got to get on Facebook and tell them they're a bunch of jerks and losers and how there. And he's like, I got this. What are you even worried about? He, he's up in heaven and we're all, and all this evil's making plans against him and he's laughing. <laughs> it's like, that's like if I was going to go up and I'm going to challenge 
Chris to a fight, he would look at me and go, <laughs> that's what he would do. He would laugh. And that's exactly what's going on here. We don't need to be freaking out. We don't need to be freaking out. I'm going to end, believe it or not, here. I know this is short. I know. Because here we are in a country, as Christians, we're in a country that seems to be in an uproar. There seems to be all this stuff going on that's kind of fighting us. And it does seem sometimes that we're losing the fight. Again, they've, they, they've, they've, they're, they're pushing evolution down our kids' throats. They, they got rid of the blue laws. They're, they're, the TV is just, and movies are just, I, you can't even rent a PG-13 anymore. You might as well rent an X-rated movie. It's the same thing. And, 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 and greed is at an all-time high. And we see this stuff with the, the marriages and the families are falling apart and the Ten Commandments are coming out of, the, out of the courthouse and you can't say in God we trust anymore and you can't say one nation under God anymore because it's not politically. Look, you can't even tell someone Merry Christmas anymore because it's not politically correct. You've got to say Happy Holidays. It seems like we're just, like we, we think we're supposed to be going forward but it feels like in this country that we're moving on all the way back but see Jesus said that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it the church is moving forward whether you think it is or not God's plans will not be thwarted he will not be stopped and you're part of that and I want you to be encouraged so how do we respond to all this stuff how do you respond like you don't just sit there and go well okay I mean there's a proper response for the Christian and it's not to go on Facebook and blast. It's not to do that. There's a response. And it's found in Philippians chapter 4. You can go there if you want. It's a very popular section of Scripture. I'm going to read it with you. And then I'm going to do it with you right here. We're going to live it out right here. God's Holy Spirit inspires the Apostle Paul to write these words. The same Holy Spirit that's in heaven right now laughing at the plans of evil to try to dethrone him. And that's the God you serve and you're his kids. And he said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ. And so let's take this opportunity to do just as God has asked us to do. And let's not worry about anything, but let's pray about everything the way he told us to do it. I'm going to lead you and then I'm going to get quiet and give you the opportunity to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord before we take communion. Lord, it does seem it does seem like when we put on the news it seems like you and us like we're losing But I'm reminded, Lord, personally, that the church, your church, that you said would grow and would last forever, is not losing. It's gaining ground. It's pushing darkness back. The greatest places of growth in this world, in the church, are places where the enemies of God have tried to, to put you under their foot by, by burning Bibles, which spurs revival. By, by making Christianity illegal. Thousands and thousands of underground churches begin to sprout up. I was reminded today again of how just off our shore in Cuba, 
they made it illegal for more than 25 people to gather in the name of Christ nationwide. So what have they done? They forced us to do exactly what you wanted to, to gather in homes by the millions and worship you. And it's growing there where it's most persecuted, proving yet again that nothing will stop this unstoppable force called the church. And Lord, even though it seems like we're losing, oh, we are winning. You were here long before America began. And you will be here long after America is gone. We thank you, Lord, for this amazing country that we live in. The incredible natural resources. The incredible uh, people that live in the diversity that is here. The incredible beauty, the splendor for our eyes to lay on every single day, no matter where we go, from the sunsets to the mountaintops. Incredible. Better than any place on earth. We thank you for the freedom that you've given us these 200 plus years to come and actually worship you freely. But Lord, we understand that your word is true and that you have created all the nations and that you have decided beforehand when they will rise and when they will fall and you have set the boundaries for them all. And we as your people live within those parameters of time and space while we're here. But we're reminded right now that we are not from here and we will not stay here. That we are just foreigners passing through this land. And we look forward to a greater nation that's not built by human hands but built by you. Eternal glory with you, Father. Given to us by the blessing of your Son. Lord, you are so good to us. A people, the bride, the body of Christ, you're so incredibly good to us. As we go quiet, we're going to take a few moments, Lord, to just acknowledge the incredible things that you've done in our lives individually, as families, as a church, as a nation. We can lift up our authorities, our president, our congressmen, our sheriffs, our, our city councilmen, whatever we choose to do. But we could take some time to thank you for all those things that you've done and provided for us. We'll also take a few moments to just lay it before you, the things that, that are on our hearts that we feel like we need to see, we need to experience, we want to see for, for your country here in America. We want to lay before you the things that we'd like to see happen in your eternal nation, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. And as we do it, Lord, we pray in expectation to receive the back end of that promise, which is that we will receive the peace that surpasses all understanding and that it will guard our heart and mind as we live in Christ. So we pray.